This is a follow-up video to the previous video entitled, I am a molecule. As noted, about 57% of people agree that humans are molecules. And to make matters worse, Jill dumped me last night. Dumped you? Don't you have to be going out to get dumped? What does that mean? Well, I just thought it was more of a... Anyway, I don't understand why you care so much. Jill wasn't right for you, and you know it. How can you say that? She was perfect. When are you going to get it? They're just well-formed molecules. And by the way, her tits weren't even real. Well, I could squeeze them. That's real enough for me. Whereas about 43% of people are either unsure about the question or believe they are not a molecule. An example of this point of view is found in the commentary of American sociologist Steve Fuller, the noted intelligent design advocate who in his 2004 article, I Am Not a Molecule, published in New Scientist, argued against atomic reductionism in sociology and aims to profess his view that he believes he is not a molecule. Social physics attempts to rationalize violent social revolutions by casting them as critical phase transitions, like a fluid goes through to become a gas. Treating masses of people in the same way as atoms makes it seem inevitable that their mood will change from inert solidity to liberal fluidity and finally, gaseous revolt. No further explanation is needed. The motives and thoughts of the revolutionaries are irrelevant. Fuller defends his view that he is not a molecule by arguing that recent human particle themed books, such as English chemist Philip Ball's 2004 Critical Mass, American evolutionary biologist Jared Diamond's 2005 Collapse, and Canadian born American evolutionary psychologist Stephen Pinker's 2002 blank slate are all making huge oversimplifications that obscure the basic human conditions, those such as marriage decisions, future income planning, and general quality of life, and so on. He goes on using little more than a few vague statements to conclude that in the future, social scientists, he believes, will have little to fear from the chastening words of interloping chemists. In reading his article, one might reason possibly that Fuller, having degrees only in philosophy is not seasoned in the hard sciences, those such as physics and chemistry, and that this may explain his lack of understanding. Yet, as one will find, the concept of the person as a human molecule is not easy to grasp even for hardened physicists. An example of this are the views professed in the 2007 book, The Social Atom, by American physicist Mark Buchanan, who seems to think that humans technically are atoms not molecules. We should think of people as if they were atoms or molecules, following simple rules and try to learn patterns to which those rules lead. Technically, to correct Buchanan, by definition, a human is not an atom. A molecule, by definition, is a structure of two or more atoms, and an atom, by definition, is a structure of one element. People, according to mass composition tables, are structures of two or more elements, 26 to be exact. Certainly we may concede that Buchanan in this passage is attempting to use metaphor, but in any event, the same the statement indicates a level of ambivalence in his mind. In short, in, in short and kind of very loosely, loosely speaking, um, we're kind of akin to, to social atoms who follow relatively simple rules. So that's, that's where I make this kind of loose analogy to the, the idea of atoms. The atoms in the physical world go together in patterns to create order in, in the physical world. We're the social atoms that go together in various ways to create order in the social world. Tremendous differences, of course, because we can learn and simple atoms in the physical world don't. That's as far as the analogy goes, but it, it's just a nice way to think. Moreover, in regards to the question of free will, Buchanan falters. He says that people are atoms, but that they have free will due to atomic level chaos within the framework of large scale system based laws of thermodynamics. The issue of free will is a large one. Recent polls indicate that 90% of people believe they have a free will. This belief, however, is in direct conflict with what we understand about atoms and molecules. Never in the history of science has anyone ever discovered or found an atom or a molecule in possession of a free will. When confronted with this incongruency, many tend to become steeped in fear and confusion. To exemplify this, the following is an example response video after a reading of Buchanan's book.
I've read the book, and I'm not quite certain which is more frightening, the idea that we are all individuals driven to act by a complicated set of individual traits and experience, therefore never understandable, or the idea that we move in groups in quite predictable ways, driven by an entirely external type of force. Clearly, if we study history and human behavior and find the patterns, if we can look at individuals as social atoms moving in predictable ways, we can understand and predict, which of course can impact everything from, from how, why we start wars to um, what the next fashion trend will be. In sum, about 43% of people have some type of objection or confusion on the idea that they are just a molecule. It will still be many centuries to note before the logic of the human model will become solidified in the public mind. What we need in the meantime is for seasoned physicists and chemists to come forward, clearly profess or state their views on this matter, and to do further research and publication so that we might find resolution in the future on this issue.